Hi all, welcome to the fourth part of opening names with D4. So after D4, we also have the Benko Gambit. So the Benko Gambit is when black strikes out first with C5 and now immediately plays B5. So it gets a lot of compensation. It's one of the most well respected gambits available to the black player. Um, so white can either take um, or, or ignore it here even but if he takes then black continues with this a6 and if takes bishop a6 you know often that bishop's annoying on the diagonal and it immediately you know prevents white uh, from naturally casting if white plays e e4 so the Benko gambit um, there's a lot of theory on that so let's just continue to, to emphasize um, different opening names if we go back after d4 we also have an immediate c5 so after d5 um, this is like the classic old old Benoni I think it's also known as um, well coming up it could transpose into a shack Benoni but this is old Benoni defense here after c4 say um, d6 let's see if we can get that shack um, Benoni transposition well, I think this this is kind of Shep Benoni territory, but um, all right, let's let's go to another name. So after d4, if Black plays f5, this is known as the Dutch defense. So um, Black's trying to control e4, but also later it can be good attacking prospects on, on White's king side. Um, so the modern system um, is when white Fianchetto is the bishop I think this gives white a secure king position than doing anything else um, so say bishop e7 here and c4 here so a stone wall formation will be like d5 a more fluid formation is, is d6 and d6 often has the idea of queen e8, bishop moves, then maybe e5 later, e4. So against the stone wall, that's kind of easy strategically to think about because um, black's committed the pawn structure, there's weakened dark squares. Uh, okay, let's go back though. So d4, f5. Now, the Staunton Gambit is an immediate e4, an interesting gambit which um, I played with some success myself. I think I have a video annotated uh, club game or two in this. So, White is offering that pawn and now plays like f3 to accelerate development. If you know black takes, then another piece gets developed. Can be kind of dangerous for black. Lots of theory on that. So, um, Someone's also mentioned, I should mention things like the barrier attack, etc., which people like Mark Hebden have had good success. So, in the Queen's Pawn systems, generally, um, White can, um, for example, play something like this with, with the Knights coming out, and then, um, say, Bishop g5. Um, and Queen D2 and Castle's Queen side. This this kind of thing is is possible as well. Um, to treat it as a kind of um, not not playing for C4 later, but Knight C3. So th there's interesting stuff available um, with with those sort of ideas. So I th I think we've given a very quick very quick overview of one D4 opening names. Um, So, um, I hope uh, something is uh, interesting there. Is just these are just really reference videos, not really um, for entertaining purposes. Uh, if you want to look up some of those systems and and use them yourself, that's that's great. I think the most respected at the moment, um, well, the most trodden lines at the moment at the GM level, for example, after e6 is the Queen's engine. People don't seem to play knight c3 as much. Um, also, of course, um, the Slav is on the rage at the moment, the Slav defence. 
So these are the key ones. I think the King's Engine has gone a bit out of the out of favour, but some 2,700 players like Rajabov still play. You know the, the King's Engine defence. Um, I think the Greenfield is not as popular as it once was, but I think Zvidla plays, for example, the Greenfield. You know, if you if you have 2,700 plus exponents playing an opening, so you know it's 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 viable. These are all great systems for Black to consider. I'm not sure um, the Benko Gambit, although a well-respected game, is is played that much at a very high level um, anymore. Because there's a lot of systems at White's disposal, and I think computers have made such gambits a bit more risky in a way. If, if White can play solidly, um, following analysis, it's um, it's following a beaten theoretical path quite a lot. Um, I I personally also like you know throwing in surprises. You know if if um, let's flip the board. This d6 is also interesting with an immediate e5. I've, I've been playing this in Blitz, um, so um, this is kind of inviting a queen exchange. I'm not totally sure what it's <laughs> called at this moment, actually. Uh, just d6. Um, it can transpose, of course, into uh, a perk. That's one of the problems with it. If white just plays knight f3 and treats it like a perk defense, you need to know your perk defense theory. With with black actually, it's 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 good to point out here that um, you know e even if you don't know those major um, d4 anti d4 systems, you can also just play to, for a transposition into e4. For example, e6 is was played by Botvinnik a lot just to invite the French defence. If White now decides e4, then we got a French defence. Um, so d6 by the same token is sort of works along similar lines. But also, you can imagine c6 is inviting a Karakhan. So there's tricks as well, just to make use of your your repertoire against one e4 when when confronted with with d4. Um, but uh, I think knight f6 is the most flexible move, not committing um, pawns, um, going into the Indian systems in inverted commas. But um, as I say, also the Slav is just incredibly popular at the moment, just just to play. Um, the Slav defense. Okay, um, good luck against D4, and I hope um, this overview, these overview videos have been good of names. Um, may, maybe I'll go into more depths of particular systems later. Okay, thanks very much.